Well, it's been a big week in Northern Territory politics. Natasha Files was forced to resign as Chief Minister after it was revealed she had failed to declare shares she held in mining company South 32. Eva Lawler won the support of her caucus colleagues to become the Northern Territory's 13th Chief Minister. I spoke to her earlier today. Well, Eva Lawler, congratulations. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, you said yesterday that your first priority is community safety. I was just having a look at the crime figures before and there's significant increases over the past 12 months again in assaults, property break-ins. How has this situation become so dire? Uh, and that's the, you know, the million dollar question, Matt. And you know, my electorate is Palmerston, um, in Palmerston, a low socioeconomic area. And you know, that's the number one question, whether I'm at the markets, at the shopping centres, you know, they're the conversations uh, that are being had by people. And, and people hark back to the, the good old days in the Territory you know, where you could leave your keys in the car and leave your doors open. So, Matt, I mean, the, the good news is that we have a relatively new police commissioner. So Michael Murphy is, uh, is doing an outstanding job. I think he's very much focused on the issue that we talk about around crime and antisocial behaviour. He has made changes around his structures um, as well as putting in new units um, and very much focused on getting those resources in the right place. We've also got a, a, a new police minister, um, Brent Potter. He's got that portfolio very, very focused on what needs to be done. Um, you know, when it was Kate Warden's, poor Kate had a large number of other portfolios. So that's part, been part of the strategy to keep him very focused on police. So. There's been about, and he's only had about seven weeks, but I think we've already seen some improvements around that. The, you know, the work that's happening in Alice Springs where we've literally, you know, smothering um, the issue around summer and, you know, kids and things like that. I have also said as the new Chief Minister and having a new deputy in that I'm, you know, we'll need to look at the policy settings. You know, and governments need to do that um, absolutely going into election cycles. But now's the time to do that. So I'm very ha happy to do that. We'll work together as a cabinet. Uh, you've got Nari uh, Kit in that Territory Families portfolio. Nari is an old Territorian. She you know, knows all the Indigenous families. She often knows these kids. Um, and so she can have some really strong input in ways to address that issue. You're going to look at the poli policy settings. Is that an admission, though, that you you've got some of those things wrong over the past... Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I always use the analogy of the balloon, you know, with so with alcohol policy, with youth crime, you, you constantly are looking and readjusting, and whether it's policy or resources, dollars, you're constantly having to do that. You know, this isn't just an issue for the Northern Territory. You know, you can read the, the media and see that. But it is... It's a, and it's, as a, an educator for a long time, it's a, a disappointing issue to see that a young people aren't reaching their full, t full potential. They're going on a trajectory to a life of crime, of petty crime, really often it is, um, all for the sake of what, you know. So um, there is a lot of work that always has to be done in this area, um, and I'm very happy to continue to do that. Um, but, you know, you do need the, the resources of the public sector to be behind that too. I think there'd be a lot of people in the members of the public and probably people in your electorate who feel that the, the consequences for people who do the wrong thing, particularly young people, aren't what they should be at the moment. And we spoke the other day about yeah. a 15 year old who's charging at people with a machete yeah, at was, the yeah, Casarena Shopping Centre and he's taken home to a responsible adult. So do you, do you think the consequences are what, where they need to be? So the, the, poli yeah, and the policy settings are fine with that one. You know, he shouldn't have been uh, taken home. But we do need to be... So what, why? Well, why yeah, well, that's right. I mean, you know, and that, that's a, probably an answer for a question for the police commissioner um, and, um, and the minister for police, really, at the moment. I mean, but they're things that obviously... I've been in the job a day. I'm <laughs> very... Or half a day. Well, they might be questions um, for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I'm, you know, and I mean, I'm, I'll um, meet... I have spoken, obviously, to Michael Murphy by phone. He's been in Alice Springs. Uh, but I'll catch up with him between Christmas and New Year. But, yeah, people do want to see consequences. And, you know, that word feels a bit overused, but it is... And, you know, as I said, I've been a teacher and, you know, you're a parent, so you know if a child does something wrong and, you know, these are child, the children that we're talking about. To me, the, the consequences need to be more immediate because it's no point in, you know, disciplining your kid, taking their iPad away two days later for doing, you know, something wrong... You know, two days, and then particularly some of these kids that we're talking about are kids with uh, fetal alcohol or really, you know, developmental delays that are doing some of these behaviours. That's that's a fact, and that's not being soft on crime. It is an absolute fact um, that we have. We have in our schools about 36% of our students 
uh, that are identified as having some sort of disability, higher than anywhere else in Australia. So, you know, the consequences do need to be closer to the, the behaviour so that absolutely we know about it, they know about it, um, and that they do need to be, um, you know, Get increasing in severity, you know, early on, it needs to be something that absolutely makes a difference to their life then. And that's the work that NARI needs to do with families as well. Um, I think if you're a 10 or 11 year old that's on the street, there's absolutely, and I think we'd all agree, absolutely something going wrong in that family. Well, that's an interesting point because one of the things your government's done is, is raise the age of criminal responsibility only a few months ago. If you're saying you're going to look at the policy settings, is, is that on the table as well? Lower... No, no, it's not. It's not on the... And I'll be very clear about that. It isn't on the table. I mean, that was a Royal Commission recommendation. But what is on the table is what we do better with those kids. As I said, a 10, 11, 12-year-old, um, if you're doing something wrong, like I say, what's going on in that family... What's the interventions that are needed by government agencies for that child to turn that child's life around uh, before it's too late? Um, you know, our youth detention facilities are full, our jail's full. Um, you know, my last budget, I was putting in, um, you know, demandable cells in um, Central Australia. So, you know, we can't keep going along that trajectory. Also, as Treasurer, the cost of, the cost of crime is huge. That impact on the Territory is huge. So, you know, we do need to address that and, you know, yes, we we absolutely are and previous chief ministers have and I'm the next chief minister, but, you know, we do have that opportunity to reset, to have a look at those policy settings. I think we're, you know, getting some traction with um, Michael Murphy there, you know, turning things, focusing things in a different way. We'll keep doing that. The, the other big issue, and you talked about this yesterday, was the cost of living and the economy. Yeah. It feels like our economy has just been stuck in sort of no man's land for yeah, a while I mean, now. How the state final demand is 1.9, so, yo, it, but that, this is the reality of the world at the moment. I mean, you had the Ukraine conflict and now you've got the Palestinian conflict. You know, there's lots happening globally as well as... And some would say that that opens oh, up an opportunity for us yes, with gas resources. Oh, absolutely. In, so, so, and, and that's the question a lot of people are going to have, whether you, you are going to be a big supporter of the resources industry, of the gas industry, no, or whether... I'm the biggest supporter of the <laughs> onshore oil and gas industry and have been from day one. I have also held the environment portfolio. I did a lot of the work around, um, you know, climate change, the policy work around climate change, the all, a lot of the policy work around water. We have some... We have, I think, the strongest protections in the world around environmental protections around uh, the onshore oil and gas industry. You have to have both. We know that. Territorians want both, uh, but, you know, we do need an onshore oil and gas industry. With the offshore oil and gas industry, we see our, go our gas going to Japan. We need jobs in the Territory. We need, and, you know, Middle Arm provides about 20,000 jobs. But, you know, th some of those jobs will come through renewables because, again, you know, um, Jakarta have put in for an expression of interest for 100 megawatts of renewables. I've got um, Larrakia Energy as well. There are lots of people that are, you know, very keen to put in renewables. We've got the water at Adelaide River off-stream water storage as well. So if you've got the water, uh, you've got renewable energy, you have green hydrogen. So, you know, there's great opportunities into the future for the Northern Territory, and that's what Middle Arm's about. Um, that's why I'll work hard. I've said I'll front um, the Senate inquiry because we need, we need those senators to understand, Sarah Hanson-Young, to understand the absolute benefit of the Middle Arm well, they, they would say that if if a key proponent at Middle Arm is the gas industry and is the onshore gas industry in particular, then then that's not something we should be doing. It's to the, the impact on emissions is too great. Uh, the impact on the environment is too great. We should shelve that altogether. Yeah, that's right. So that's why you have carbon capture storage as well. You can't have no gas in the world right now. Yes, we all want a trajectory, and we've got our trajectory to 50% renewable by 2030. We've also got net zero. A lot of those gas companies have got net zero by 2040, earlier than um, our government as well. So, but you have to have gas. We can't just have renewables. Um, you know, that is an absolute fact. Um, but yes, if we're going to have an onshore oil and gas industry, it has to be monitored tight, uh, very, very tightly. Um, you know, the federal government just put in the water trigger as well. So there'll be those assessments, but we already have assessments around water. We, um, in the Northern Territory, our government, our Labor government, is supportive of an onshore oil and gas industry. Um, right from the start, I've been supportive of the onshore oil and gas industry because I can see the benefit. 
You can't say you want new schools, you want better hospitals if you don't have your own source revenue. We go, we rely on, as you know, on the GST coming from Canberra. And, you know, as Treasurer, that can be really quite volatile. You know, we've been fortunate in the last couple of budgets where it's been higher. You know, Nicole Madison, when she was Treasurer, it dropped. It was about $3.6 billion over our four So we need, we need to have our own yes, source absolutely. of revenue. And the, and the other one, I suppose, just quickly, because we're running out of time, yeah. is um, the Barossa project. We're seeing that stalled in the federal court, lots of challenges being made on environmental grounds, on, on cultural yes. heritage grounds. I mean, are you confident that's going to go ahead? Do you want to see it go ahead? I absolutely want to go and I want to see it go ahead. It's a $6 billion project. We have had an offshore oil and gas industry. We've got LNG, we've had Conoco, Darwin LNG, Ichthyus. They've worked very successfully in um, on our harbour. You know, we have great relationships with IMPEC, some of the best relationships that our government has. We need the Barossa project to go ahead. But again, that's one of the one of the key things. If you're doing business in the territory, you do need to well, in the world you need to work with environmentalists. But in the Territory, you also need to work with traditional owners. Uh, and Santos, did they get that right early on? Maybe they didn't. Um, but I know that they're working very hard on that project now around that. But we do need to have um, that project for the, the economy of the Northern Territory. And finally, 10-second answer. Yeah. Uh, can you win the next election? Absolutely. Yes, we can. Eva Lawler, thanks, thanks for your time. Thank you, Matt.